This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Of course, uh, they go in the Hall of Fame. It's announced February 23rd, 2015. The Bushwhackers are Hall of Famers. Uh, they actually go in on March 28th. During their speech, they acknowledge Killer Kowalski, Andre, Peter Mavia, and um, it was kind of a fun little deal. And it was weird to see because it doesn't feel like we usually see guys who have a harder time getting around on stage at the Hall of Fame. I think maybe folks just don't want that represented on a WWE hall of fame stage or whatever. I don't have any inside information, but even with the walkers, it was so cool to see the bushwhackers one last time at a WWE event. And they're certainly hall of fame worthy given the impression they left on so many kids from 83 or 88 to 93. Right. Absolutely. But not only, you know, the kids in the audience, but the talent in the locker room and, and all the talent that had kind of come through there because Luke and Butch pretty much touched so much of that talent and were always guys that would offer words of encouragement and words of advice and how to do this, how to do that. Luke was a hell of a booker and a great mind for the business and had done an awful lot. San Antonio, Puerto Rico and different places where he was successful and really had done a good job with that and had an eye for talent um, but they, you know, they also loved their independence. Butch had gone back to New Zealand and was happy with that. Butch, I think, was a few years older than Luke. But just the, just the warmth from the, the talent and the audience overall, here are two guys that could walk in to a locker room pretty much anywhere, be known and be respected and held in very high regard, no matter where the hell they were. Let's, let's talk about, just take a time out here for a minute. On September 14th, the Bushwhackers make their last appearance while under contract, defeating Justin Bradshaw and uncle Zebediah at a house show. Of course, that's JBL and Dutch Mantel these days. After leaving the company, the team made special appearances in the indie circuit, including a return to Puerto Rico for the 24th anniversary show. They're billed as uh, the sheep herders here and take on the old rivals invaders one and two, or even on Terry Funk's wrestle fest show in Amarillo in 97, they lose to their old rivals, Mark and Chris Youngblood in 98. They even make a couple of appearances in ECW under the names, Luke and Butch Dudley as the cousins of the Dudley brothers. Uh, infamously, they were a part of that heroes of wrestling pay-per-view, that terrible show in 99. Uh, but their, I guess one of their big last major appearances was WrestleMania 17, the gimmick battle Royal. Uh, what was the relationship like, you know, and uh, is it just natural and understood? Hey guys, we, uh, we're going in a new direction Were they ready to wind down. Tell me about how their run came to an end and how they apparently stayed in good graces to get a big shot, a big spot at WrestleMania 17. Well, I think of anybody, the Bushwhackers who had been all over the world and worked territories for so much, they realized it. They knew it. And they're professional enough to say, yes, okay. I mean, it's our, our run. We had a hell of a run that was probably five or six times longer than they anticipated in the beginning or that they had ever had anywhere else. So they looked at it as, as businessmen do, that, okay, we're – finishing up here and we'll go on to different frontiers and evolve from this. So they look, man, they were great. They understood they're professional and they're businessmen. Hey, Hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. So you get a notice anytime we upload some new content and go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.